Uh, on a, a bit of a sad note, we heard on Sunday morning that uh, Zimbabwean cricket great Heath Streak uh, has died, unfortunately, at the age of 49. And this is following a battle with colon and uh, liver cancer. And Heath Streak, of course, played for Zimbabwe at a time when that country was uh, very much competitive in uh, cricket, in fact, against Tier 1 countries. And I'm joined by uh, his former captain in the national team, Alistair Campbell, who's joining us uh, from just outside Harare this morning in Zimbabwe. Alistair, thank you so much for your time. A very sad, sad story, that of Heath Streak. How did you receive the news? Yeah, it's uh, very sad news. Um, we sort of knew about it as a team or former teammates uh, from uh, uh, sort of February this year that uh, he wasn't doing well and, uh, you know, had to uh, go down to, uh, to Joburg and, uh, and uh, yeah, get some, some treatment. And, and obviously it, uh, he hadn't caught it early enough. So we, we knew from, from sort of, yeah, six months ago, five months ago that it wasn't good. Uh, and, uh, you know, we've been there trying to support him as, as best we can uh, through this period. Um, he did try some, you know, experimental treatments and, and trying to get uh, things back on track. But uh, unfortunately, it was, uh, it was just too aggressive. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it really is a, a sad story. You know, at 49 years old, no one would have uh, thought it's far too young. Um, but uh, at, least he, at least he had the opportunity to uh, yeah, get all his family around him and, uh, and then, yeah, in the early hours of, uh, of Sunday, we had been expecting it. But uh, even though you are expecting it, you, uh, you still, yeah, it still hits home hard when, uh, when you do receive the news. Mm. And you speak about uh, his, his former teammates. Were you guys aware at the beginning of just how, how bad it was? And do you have any idea of which stage it was uh, sort of discovered? Yeah, yeah, we were aware, and uh, as I said, we, we we formed the group at the instigation of John Rennie, who's uh, um, been really good and been uh, at his uh, at his side. Um, so we were under no illusion, but there's always hope, you know, where there's a will, there's a way. And uh, being, uh, you know, such a fighter, um, you know, we thought maybe, uh, yeah, there would there would be a chance. Sorry, I'm I'm breaking up. Still, still very very raw. At, um, <laughs> At uh, at this stage, but it's sorry. Yeah, he's fought. He's fought take, take, take your time, Alistair. Take your time. Man. It's a difficult uh, period, obviously, for for everyone who who loves the game, who loves Zimbabwean cricket, and especially you guys, the former teammates who knew him personally for so many years, played with him inside the Zimbabwean national cricket team. Yeah, correct. And uh, and you know what, it's it's done now. And uh, you've just got to remember the the good he did. And um, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of people will uh, remember his stats and the world class player that he was. And th those are irrefutable. But what's coming out now is uh, you know what he what good he did for for his community. What uh, how he was loved by so many people in so many walks of life that uh, that we didn't really uh, know about the charities that that he supported that uh, no one really knew about. So. That's the that's the real legacy, uh, as far as I'm concerned. That uh, you know, you do what you do on the field, but uh, what you do off the field is is what counts. And uh, he did a lot of good things, and uh, those are being uh, remembered now. And 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 that's that's a good legacy to leave. Yeah, yeah, sure. And and as a as a player, what a classy player he was. I mean, to have the the sort of numbers though, uh, Alistair, that he streak had here and. The batting average, I'm looking at uh, both the, the, the longest format, the test average that he had, uh, the ODI average that he had. Would you say his streak was the best all-rounder that Zimbabwean cricket ever had? Yeah, without a doubt. Um, that's, that's not in dispute. And, uh, you know, he sort of... Um he became a better batsman as uh, as he progressed. And I think that's just a, a natural evolution as you as, a, as an all rounder. Is that as you get older, obviously you, you become uh, more more wily as an operator as, as a bowler. But you lose a bit of pace, but you make up that with skill and experience and 
uh, you know, you learn how to get it done. But definitely it's just uh, the law of physics that, uh, you know, the older you get, uh, you're not going to be able to bowl uh, as quick as you used to, to be. The body just doesn't hold up. So uh, he then focused uh, a lot more on his batting and became a, a genuine option. Could have batted, uh, you know, at number six or seven. Uh, and I think he did do a lot of that uh, in the latter half of his career. So really matured and, and became a, a, a really good batsman towards the end of his career. But and so far as his bowling is concerned, I think that uh, he shouldered the, the burden of the attack for so many years that it just it did take its toll at the end. You, you know, you can't be uh, you can't be bowling that many overs in, in crucial times and uh, and still expect to uh, to be able to have uh, longevity as a as a career as a fast bowler. So uh, he was tough as nails in any you know any sort of uh, uh, pressure situation. Throwing the ball to him, you knew that uh, he would be able to handle it. You knew that he had the skills to to handle it and the, the mental fortitude to handle it. So. It was a pleasure for me to, to captain him. As I said, in, in any uh, you know given situation, you knew that you had a match winner, a genuine world-class bowler at your uh, disposal. And many a time, he gave us a great start. You know, uh, could swing the ball, uh, you know, both ways. Had a great off cutter, accurate. Uh, you know, bowled with uh, decent pace as well. So I just think that uh, you know, uh, as a uh, to answer your question, uh, was he the the best all rounder that Zimbabwe has uh, produced without a shadow of a doubt? Was he uh, and in his prime, one of the top all-rounders in world cricket, absolutely. And, uh, and you know, that's a testament to, to how good the guy was. Mm. And, and what, what a joy it is for, for a captain, right, Alistair, to be able to throw the ball to a guy like that when you desperately need him in a match where either you uh, are looking, you're staring down the barrel of defeat, or it looks like perhaps in test cricket... It might be even a draw, and to to have the the luxury to throw the ball over to his streak as a captain must have made you look good a couple of times. Yeah, it's great having world class performers because uh, yeah, they they invariably uh, you know love the big moments and uh, and love to get the the job done. I mean, it's it's like golfers, you know, you you play to uh, play on Sunday down the stretch, you know, not to to play on the first two days. It's uh, when it counts it really matters. And he had that psyche. But one thing I think that uh, set him apart, you you know as well as I do, Test cricket. There's some very uh, you know, uh, on flat pitches, there's, there's some times as a fielding side and a bowling side where you just don't know where to turn. You know, the, the batsmen are in. There's a big partnership developing. Uh, it's hot. It's uh, 35 degrees in the afternoon. No one wants to bowl. And uh, that was the difference with Heath. You could go to him and he would uh, he would uh, try and turn things around, try and make something happen. He wasn't afraid to bowl in the, in the periods where it was uh, unfashionable to bowl. You know, a lot of the time you'll see the guys saying, no, thanks, I'll just field on the fine leg boundary. It's too hot and looking the other way when the captain turns to them, where he was uh, looking him in the eye, coming to you and saying, hold on, I want to bowl. We need to do something about this. We need to try and get back in this game. So having a guy with that mindset and, uh, yeah, not only the qualities that we've talked about, but uh, wanting to bowl when nothing was happening, when, uh, you know, something needed to happen and being able to take on uh, tasks in the, the most, uh, yeah, you know, not great situations in, in the course of a test match game. And uh, his ability to do that invariably make something happen was a, a testament to his strength of character as well. Mm. But but where, where did it go wrong then, Alistair, for Zimbabwean cricket? If if I mean there were there were guys like you and uh, Heath, I know they tried to to revive uh, 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 cricket in Zimbabwe by bringing in the likes of uh, Heath um, in the latter stages of his life as coach. But how did Zimbabwean cricket then get to a point where even qualifying for the World Cup is a big, big problem? And uh, test cricket, they're nowhere to be found in the tier one nations. How did we get here? Yeah, uh, look, I mean, that's, uh, that's a long story <laughs> and well documented and everyone's got their, their five cents. Uh, I think Zimbabwe cricket's in a good place at the moment. I think Dave Houghton's done a terrific job, uh, you know, getting them to being competitive and where they are. But I, I think that you've got to give credit to uh, other nations that are, that are upcoming. When, when I was playing, the likes of Ireland and the Netherlands and even Bangladesh, and Nepal, I mean, they, you know, they, they were non-entities. They, they, they didn't really have any infrastructure. And I think all those ICC, the associate members, have really upped their game and uh, producing some quality cricketers. So I think the gap, particularly in the white ball format, is, uh, has closed. And it's not only Zimbabwe. You saw West Indies uh, miss out mm. and, mm. in this qualifier. So I think that uh, Wake 
cup call for some of the, the sort of uh, uh, test playing nations, as it were, to, to up their game so far as their structures are concerned and try and get uh, back on track. The demise of West Indian cricket has been well documented over the years and although they have uh, really good individual players and you know they grace the leagues all over the world, they find it difficult to become a cohesive unit when they're playing as the West Indies. So I think with the, the Zim side that uh, they're in a good space and uh, I think there's, uh, you know, there, there's, there's potential moving forward, although you know, you have to pay attention to the structures. But, you know, when Heath came in, I was uh, involved in, in Zimbabwe cricket then, and I was instrumental in getting him back and getting um, uh, Grant Flower back to come and mm. coach to try and get things back on track after a, a long period in the wilderness. And they did a terrific job. And I think if you look back when they were involved, it was it was really good. The guys were, were sort of... Uh, buying into uh, where Zimbabwe cricket needed to go. Even in the franchise uh, scenarios, uh, I managed to bring in guys like Alan Donald, Jason Gillespie, Chris Silverwood, who was the ex-England coach. All of those guys came and coached in our franchise cricket. So yeah. there was a period there that uh, there was resuscitation and uh, and sort of uh, the growth of Zimbabwe cricket was happening. And he played a big part in that insofar as getting us uh, back on track. And not to say that we're fully on the, the railway line at the moment, but I think that was the start of putting behind the saga of yesteryear and uh, and uh, you know what's uh, what what it, what transpired in the in the sort of early 2000s and uh, and get us back to where we are now and hopefully uh, you know his uh, legacy will continue in the team and make us uh, sort of more competitive nation moving forward yeah. and taking our place at the top table. I think that's what everybody wants to see: a, a competitive Zimbabwe, a Zimbabwe that uh, is able to hold its own in, amongst the tier one nations, and that's yeah. the holy grail, isn't it? Yeah, uh, and and. I, I cannot uh, not ask you this one, uh, then, Alistair. I, I, his career wasn't without controversy, uh, obviously, and towards the latter stages, in fact, we remember a couple of years ago in 2021, Heath Streak was banned for eight years, uh, and his return would uh, have only been in 2029 from all cricketing activities. Uh, f and he had admitted to four counts, I think, uh, of corruption against uh, himself. Do you think that taints how Zimbabweans especially see him and his legacy there? W will, will it uh, ever change how he's seen as a cricket great in that country? I don't think so. Not the sentiment that I've, uh, that I've uh, seen and heard. Um, I think when it did happen, there was anger because uh, nobody wants to see uh, or, or hear that their hero is, uh, is fallible. No one wants to, to hear bad stories and, and couldn't believe it. So there was a, sort of a bit of a shock and, and, and disappointment and anger uh, because uh, they just didn't want to believe. Nobody wanted to believe that, that this great uh, hero had, uh, had, uh, had done something to bring the game into disrepute. And, uh, and once they got over that and, and, and obviously realized and the full facts came out, and the fact of the matter is that he didn't throw a game. He, he didn't, uh, he didn't uh, you know, willfully throw a game on behalf of Zimbabwe or for the other sides that he coached. It was for feeding information to, uh, to bookmakers. And, and he realized that, uh, that he, had, he had done wrong. And, uh, and I think it's, 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 it's important to differentiate. Everyone talks about match fixing as though, you know, you've thrown a game because that's what it uh, became known as uh, insofar as uh, when it started yeah. with Hansi all those years ago. Um, but this wasn't that. This was more like uh, feeding the bookmakers. And if you look back at, uh, you know, Mark War or, or, or uh, that saga in Sri Lanka where, where it was just giving, the, giving somebody who phoned you information on team or, or information on the pitch. And that's what it was. So it doesn't, I'm not sanitizing it. It doesn't make it right. But it's not, um, it, yeah. it's not uh, match fixing. It wasn't, you know, he wasn't banned for, 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 for throwing games. And, and, and I think the differentiation yeah. is, needs to be clear. Um, but still, it, it, it did taint his, uh, the latter half of his coaching career. And, but it, he had made peace with I, that, and he was trying to work with the ICC to educate I, I, other I, people I, to educate youngsters. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to come in there, uh, Alistair. I think your, yeah. your point is well made there. Uh, and unfortunately, we're out of time. But we'll continue uh, paying tribute to Heath Streak. We'll talk to you uh, some other time with some of the details as well.